Shaitan promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala four things. He said, Walla udillanna hum. He said, I will lead them astray. And you look at the majority of humanity today. Instead of becoming the servants of Rahman, they are the servants of Shaitan. Then he said, Walla umanniyanna hum. And he said, I will give them unto their false passions and their desires. And subhanAllah, you can broadly define false passions and desires into two. One are your carnal desires, your desire for the flesh. And you look at our society, how it, how it has succumbed to the wish of shaitan. Really, you look into our society today, that it is a sex-driven society. It is a sex-mad society. That the society promotes sex as long as long as you have safe sex because according to them it's a physical thing you carry on whilst islamically it's a spiritual thing when a husband comes to his wife he recites duas and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguards that child and the ulama write that this is the first right of the child because it's a spiritual thing and you look at the society today that if by the age of 16 you haven't broken your virginity there's something wrong with you this is what society promotes although a real man is not him who goes with the flow a real man who is who can stand up for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who can stem the tide of society because he believes that he's going to stand in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is why out of the seven people who will be under the shade of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment will be that young man who grew up in the worship of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will be under the shade of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the first Form is your carnal desire. Well, I will give them unto the carnal desires. The second, that shaitan will delude you in believing into false aspirations of this dunya. He will be, make you believe in false aspirations of this dunya. And he will make this dunya the purpose of your life. Not only will he make this dunya the purpose of your life, he will not give you time to even think about the purpose of your life. And subhanAllah, how you, how you see how the promise of shaitan is coming to pass. You know, they give you your TV sets, and then they give you your videos, and then they give you your DVDs, and then they give you your satellite channels, so you have more channels than you, you can even count. And then they give you your mobile phones, and then they give you voice activated mobile phones, and then they give you your camera phones, and then they give you your video phones, and then they give you the internet, and then they give the internet on your mobile phone. Like, like so that the poster say, you can shop until you drop dead. And when you drop dead, the same shaitan will say, La talumuni, lumu and fusakum. Don't blame me, blame yourself. I called you and you obliged. And you will be suckered like the billions who were suckered before you. So the second promise of shaitan was, The third promise of shaitan was, I will command them and they will slip the air of the cattle. What the mushrikeen would do is that they would slit the air and they would slit the animal and they would let on the name of their gods and they would let it walk. And wherever it fell, it was halal for the males and it was haram for the women. This is what they would do. The author of Tafsir Mazri mentions that this means, this means that a time will come where shaitan will tell man to disfigure the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you see this today, really, you look into our society, a consumer society, where they try to create chickens without feathers. They try to create chickens without feathers, where recently in Switzerland, they found a fruit fly. And from that fruit fly, they found a gene which they dubbed eyeless. And when they noted that wherever they injected this gene, an eye would grow. And they injected this gene on 14 places of this dragon, or this fruit fly. And on 14 places on the anatomy of the fruit fly, eyes grew. See, this is man playing God, playing with the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it doesn't stop there. You look at those who reach the pinnacle of success. Really, look at those people who reach the pinnacle of success. Those like Michael Jackson. 
You know, this guy was a good looking person a few years ago. But he, he reaches the pinnacle of success and then he's deluded by the dunya. He thinks that there must be some more contentment out there. But they have to realize that the only contentment is the contentment of the heart. The only time you can really have contentment is when you recognize your creator. And then what does he do? He starts playing around with his features. He starts disfiguring his features. And now you look the way the guy doesn't even look like a human being. Because this is what Shaitan said. I will command them and they will change. This figure, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the fourth promise of Shaitan is, I will command them and they will change the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. You know, the traditional interpretation for this verse was to shave the beard was to change the creation of Allah because this was a sign of a man. To pluck the eyebrows was a sign of change, a sign of changing the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But because the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala trans transcends time and space, it is relevant for all time because it is guidance until the final day. Today, it relates to your GM foods. This is changing the normal process, changing the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See, when they take the antifreeze gene from the Arctic fish, and they inject it into your tomatoes so they have longer shelf lives. This is playing with the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because believe it or not, fish don't have relationships with tomatoes. It doesn't work like that. This is GM food. You're playing with the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this was the fourth promise of shaitan. And you see it coming to pass today. What greater change could there be? That a man becomes a woman and a woman becomes a man. And Shaitan says, I will command them and they will change the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the Prophet said, hold on to the book of Allah. And the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a guy, is a hukum between you. It is a thing which passes verdict between you. It is a thing which differentiates between right and wrong, and it is not just. The Prophet ﷺ articulated this 1400 years ago, that when the Muslim will think that they honor lie somewhere else, that Allah will disgrace them. Look at the Sahaba anhum. These were a group of people who were regarded by the rest of humanity as, as philosophically. And then the Prophet ﷺ came and he transformed these people. He brought an impetus, he brought a drive, and this was Islam. And then these very people who were regarded as the worst of people became the best of people to walk upon this earth after the Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam. What was it? It was Islam. See, for other people, other philosophies will work. For other people, other ideologies will work. But for the Muslims, nothing besides Islam will work. Because this is Ummah regarding what Allah, the Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala articulates in the Quran. Kuntum khayra ummati ukhrijat lil nas. Ta'maruna bil ma'roof wa tanhawna nil munkar. That you are the best of creation. You are taken out for mankind. Now, if you think that your Israelites in some other philosophy and ideology, you're deluded. The only time the Muslims had respect were when they held on to the deed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at history. And then when they turned away from the deed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah turned away from them. And this is why we find ourselves in the decadence that we do today. Look at the state of the Muslims. And until we realize that the problem that we have today is because we have turned away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we go back to the Quran and the Sunnah. We go back to the words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and find our remedy. But the problem is that we look for remedies everywhere else other than where we should. And this is why we're in a sick state. Aren't we sick today? Aren't the minds of the youth confused? What should we hold on to? Aren't the hearts sick? Because society has many impulses. It will tell you, pull you in many directions. And then the more direction you go, the more confused you will be. Do you know what causes seasickness? Seasickness. Do you know what causes it? See, the ears send a message to the brain that, you know, when the boat rocks, that there's something wrong. <coughs> and the eyes send a message to the brain, no, I see everything's fine. So you have two confusing messages going to the brain. And as a consequence, you feel sick, you vomit. You feel sick. 
And this is why today you will find that the Muslim Ummah is sick because we are pulled in so many directions. The minds are sick, the hearts are sick, the brains are confused. And the only thing which remedies seasickness is what? That when you come up to the top deck and you look at something which is totally straight, totally straight, like the horizon, then all the confusion is removed. And similarly, there is only one guidance for us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala state this, states this in the beginning of Surah Qaf. He says, Alhamdulillah allazi anzala ala abdil kitaba wa lam yaj'al lahu iwaja. All praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has revealed on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his servant a book and he has left no crookedness in it. And until we return to a book which has no crookedness, we will remain in the confusion that we find ourselves in today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst those who follow the sunnahs of the Prophet sallallahu May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst those in a time of fitna. Go back to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us united in this dunya. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reunite us in Jannah al-Firdaw. Subhanakallah wa bihamdulillah.